And amen. And I like to remind everyone, because um, Pastor Manning said, by the way, he said hello to everyone. Uh, he's very excited uh, of being over there in Ecuador, uh, meeting with our brothers and sisters there. And, um, and he's looking forward to um, uh, this coming Wednesday. He asked me to announce to everyone that this coming Wednesday, uh, where we usually have Bible studies, uh, that he's going to have a joint Bible study session with both English and Spanish brothers and sisters. And he's, because he wants to use that time to bring a report about in Ecuador. So um, for all of you that are coming Wednesdays, it's going to be at 7 p.m. Wednesday, 7 p.m. with Pastor Manny. Okay? So um, let me now turn to our West Side youth. My dear youngsters, I really don't know at what level each of you is in your relationship with the Lord. But what I can tell you is that when I look back, I realize how much I lost by not doing my best in getting to know our Lord during my teenage years and by not taking the time to know him better, know him better through his word, and to learn about the plans that he had for me. While it is true that when the Lord chooses us for a mission, he will do so as he wants, and he will, and, and he will do so that we finally get to the place that he wants us to be. But how beautiful when those things can be defined very early in our lives. I truly believe that if this had been the case for me, the decisions I made at key moments in my life could have been different and much better because just for the simple reason that they were backed by a plan that God had for me, but that I didn't know at the time because I had not sought his direction. I did not seek his will, which is holy and perfect. And this is why I urge you, my dear youth, to take advantage of this precious time in your lives in which you have that great opportunity to truly encounter God and know the beautiful plans that he has for you. I truly urge you to do that. And God has left us very valuable verses in the Bible that can guide and advise us and advise you at every stage of your life. His word is a source of divine inspiration that shows us how to live according to his design and his purpose. So let's, um, let's look at some of these. Let's look at some of these verses. Um, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Amen? So this verse teaches us of the importance of trusting God in every decision that we make and that we seek his direction at all times. If we look at Jeremiah 29, verse 11, it reads, For I know the plans I have for you, 
And this is the Lord speaking to you, youth. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So God has wonderful plans for you, youth. Full of blessings and purpose. We must trust that he will guide our steps towards a future filled with hope. If we look at 1 Timothy 4.12, and we just read it, right? It says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. If God is not looking down on you, youth, how can we look down on you? But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. So that has to be tied together. Not looking down on you, but it's because you are proceeding in the righteous way that God wants you to proceed. So this passage encourages us to to be an example in all areas of our lives. Showing love, faith, and purity in all that we do. If we look then at Psalm 119, verse 9. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? It's a question. A question that answers itself by living according to your word. So standing firm in God's word will help us make wise decisions and stay away from evil. And by following his commandments, we will be able to, make, to keep our way clean before him. Amen? Then if we go to the New Testament and read Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Amen? This verse reminds us to prioritize God in our lives. My lovely young people, we need to prioritize God in our lives. And by putting him first and seeking his will, he will take care of all our our needs, everything that you can think of. He'll take care of it. You bet. So these uh, biblical verses that we just read are just a few examples of the wisdom we find in God's Word. Young people can find inspiration. They can find guidance and divine counsel at every stage of their lives, trusting that God is with them and will lead them to a future with purpose. And that also applies to all us Less younger folks, right? It is very important for young people to seek wisdom through reading and studying biblical texts. And it's very crucial to understand that the Bible is a source of knowledge and guidance for our paths. Now, seeking wisdom through biblical verses involves not only reading them, right? But also reflecting on their meaning and applying these to our lives. The Bible provides us with invaluable teachings to make the right choices and face the challenges of our daily lives. And by seeking wisdom in biblical verses, it also involves the practice of prayer. And meditation. We have to, we need to, to be in connection with God through prayer, meditating in His Word. These are the actions that bring us closer to God. And it will allow us to 
to gain that discernment, that direction that we need for our lives. It's so important. It's so key. It is also very important for you, young people, to live according to the principles and values that are present in the Bible. These principles go beyond traditional morality as they are based on love, justice, and respect for others. It is, a vi- it is very vital that we adults convey to our youngsters that living according to biblical principles means being consistent between what we believe and in how we act. And this is more so reflected in our relationships, our decisions, and in our daily actions. More so, living according to the Bible and its principles helps us shape our character and become living witnesses of God's love in the world. Because we must be light in the world. Light in the darkness that we have to deal with. So my beloved youth, I encourage you to make decisions based on, wor- on God's word and seek your strength to resist the temptations and deviations that we face in this world today. Go to the absolute truth that the word of God offers to you to face this world, this world that we live in, And as I said, let us be light in the midst of the darkness that wants to cover us all. This is more so important now. We see the signs every day, day in and day out. And we know that Jesus is coming soon. We know that Christ is coming soon. The signs are there, my The signs are there, church. Who would have thought, who would have thought that in this past weekend we would have heard of an earthquake in New Jersey? Right? Who would have thought? God is calling us to know. God is calling us to come to him. We have to be In his presence, we have to, we have to seek him. We hold him in our hearts. And then there is the understanding of the significance of sharing biblical teachings with other young people. And this I speak to you, my beloved youngsters. The community aspect is so fundamental in in spiritual growth and learning of our youngsters. Hey, kids, and I say this, right? Surely you have friends that, that you love and that you esteem very much. And if any of them are yet to know our Lord, any of them, Perhaps you are the best instrument that God wants to use to bring them closer or to draw them closer to him. So think about that. Might not then invite them to to know the Lord and to actively participate in congregations or in faith communities and or join Bible study groups. Because the exchange of ideas, having a group discussion with the practical application of Bible teachings that will enrich our understanding 
and that it will also strengthen our faith. Because this is just like, a, it's just like whenever you want to go to the gym or whenever you want to go and, and, and take a run, right? You'd rather have someone else running with you, right? Because it, it makes you more motivated to do it. And up to a certain point, you see it as a competition, right? Who of us two will run better, run faster, reach the mile cl- uh, sooner? That is the way that we, us human beings, react, right? That, that is the way we, we come together. And it's no different with the Word of God. It's not, not any different with the Word of God. So if we come together as a group to study the Word of God, we're going to feel much more motivated to do so. And we can learn from each other. And we can share our thoughts. And we can, you know, grow together in the Word of God. Amen? So, this allows us to encourage each other, build each other up, and support each other in times of difficulty. Very important. Times of difficulty. Because that are, those are the times where we most, mostly turn to the Lord in times of difficulty. When everything is good, peaches and cream, right? We kind of put the Lord to the side, right? But when, we, uh, we're, we're, when we're facing very challenging moments in our lives, that's when we come to the Lord. And we need before him. We even need before him. So because we face these challenges together, we can find comfort, wisdom, and encouragement in God's word. So what do you think? What do you like that? And I speak to the younger folks here. What do you like that? And there are many biblical verses that can provide inspiration and wisdom to young people looking to make important decisions in their lives. Let's look at a few of these. And I'm going to have to refer you back to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, right? It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on your own, not not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. This should be one of our takeaways for today, that we trust in the Lord always. This verse reminds us of the importance of trusting God and seeking his guidance in all our decisions. And then I have to Bring you back to Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So this is a promise from God. Nothing, any, nothing different. It's a promise from God. God's, God's promises to assure you and to assure us, right, that he has good plans for us. Therefore, we can trust his purposes and his decisions. He's sovereign anyway, right? Why not submit to him if he's sovereign? He's already sovereign in our lives. Looking at James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, 
and it will be given to you. So this verse urges us. It urges us that wisdom, or it urges us to seek divine wisdom through prayer, acknowledging that God is willing to grant us that wisdom needed to make those right choices because our life And youth, I say this to you, right? You're just, you're just starting, right? But our life is, is all dependent on choices that we make. If we look at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, in their hearts, humans plan their course but the Lord establishes their steps. Amen? We just said, right, that the Lord is sovereign in our lives. We want it or not. So this phrase reminds us that even though we can make our plans, ultimately, and I say this again, ultimately, It is God who is in control and directs our steps. And even at your younger age, youth, I can bet that that you have already experienced that. That there has been times where you have planned your own things. And the Lord makes it different for you. And you might not like what the Lord brought to your life in, in, in a given moment, but it's because you haven't yet reached the, the next mile. When you reach the next mile, then you're going to look back and say, oh, now I know why the Lord brought me through this path. So, If our almighty God is sovereign in our lives, why not allow him to take take the helm, right? And, And take it from the very beginning. Don't do like me, that I left it for my later years. Oh, no. Grab hold to, to the willing of our Lord from the very beginning of your lives. You will, not, you will not regret it. You will not regret it. So, um, we know that we won't be in better hands, right? We know that. Then we, if we turn to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, I can do all things Or I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So this verse encourages us to trust in the strength that God and that Christ gives us. To face any situation or to make important decisions in our lives. Right? These are just a few examples of biblical verses that can be a source of inspiration and wisdom for you all. And I speak to the young folks who are on this threshold of making very important decisions in your lives. You're reaching that age in in which you're going to make very important decisions in your life, decisions that will mark your life, decisions that can define your path. It is important to remember that the Bible is like a treasure chest filled with teachings and promises that can guide our lives through all these stages and milestones. So some key thoughts from God. Some key thoughts for you, my young people. Our our Lord has a message for you with regard to identity, self-esteem,
If we look into Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it says that so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So this means that each of you, my young folks, each of you has an intrinsic and unique value and that your identity is rooted in your relationship with God. It's rooted by that because you're made in the image of him. Think about that. How wonderful can that be? Um, so. For self-esteem, if we look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, it reads each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And this means that, that you, my young people, are very precious to the Lord. And therefore, he has given you gifts and talents to be used So I encourage you to discover your abilities and to use them to glorify God and help others, others that may be in need. Oh, God has so many good plans for you. You just have to let go, man. Just let go. Let go of the Spirit of God in you. And you will see how the tremendous things that he has for your life. And then when if we look at purpose in life, I have to go back again. That's why I say that these verses are takeaways from today's message. You go back to Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. And if we look at Proverbs again, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but, but in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. So I'm telling you, telling you my young folks and telling you my less younger folks, let's all submit to God. Let's all submit to him and and let his Holy Spirit work in us in such a way that, that we, we ourselves will be amazed. So young people, let it be known that you have a divine purpose in life. God has big plans for each of you. Plans that can include prosperity, hope, and a future. Therefore, whatever way, whatever way you can, seek God's will and trust that he will guide your steps through, through that wonderful journey in life. Amen. Hi, Pastor Manny here. We thank you so much for tuning in. It's a true blessing for us. If you like what you heard today, please go right ahead and download the message or share it with others. But we also invite you to come to our church at Boynton Beach. God bless you all.